Do you think that video games can be more than a fun activity to do in your spare time? Can they be an art project? In my humble opinion, of course they can. Lost Ember is a smaller scale title, leaning more into this niche of artistic visual adventure type of games. It grabs your attention through stellar, interesting presentation. But is there enough substance hiding behind the veil of colorful animals and landscapes? Well, let's see. This is the late review Lost Ember. This review is based on 11 hours spent in game, finishing the whole story, acquiring all 33 achievements available in game, which also ties to gathering every collectible there is. So here is what I think. The story begins when a lost spirit encounters a wolf able to understand it. Players take the role of the animal. It soon explained that the wolf might be reincarnation of a Yanrana tribe member, a girl called Kalani. The amulet. That's Kalani. Wolf, are you? It's time you reach the light you long for. This lost ember needs your help. Yanrana civilization is long gone at this point, but the spirit explains that people not worthy of ascending into afterlife were reincarnated as animals. So, the wolf and the spirit form a bond. Together, they search for answers. Players seek knowledge of the past events, while the spirit, serving as a guide throughout our adventure, hopes that helping the wolf will unlock the final step in its afterlife journey, entering the City of Light. Seems like you were their leader. From gameplay perspective, the spirit works as a guide and exposition presenter. Whenever a player feels lost, they can ask the spirit for guidance on what to do next. Players unveil the main narrative through their search for memories. It turns out that Yanrana was a society deeply divided within its class system. Poorest people were starving while upper classes celebrated through huge feasts. The plot concentrates not only on social injustice, it explores the conflict between generations, talks about duty, love and anger. Players follow Kalani's life through her memories. We experience the conflict between her and her father, the call to action and then the sad consequences. The narrative has a potential to draw players in, play on their emotions. It certainly worked on me ending is truly beautiful, its execution impeccable, yet the whole time I felt like the plot lacks something. It got me thinking, we live in a time when there are tens, hundreds, TV show, games, books, they tell various different stories, stories that can be similar to each other. So it's safe to say that creating something truly original is nearly impossible. What makes your story stand out then? In case of Lost Ember, it's the setting and the presentation for sure, but the plot, topics and themes shown in the game could've been explored in other games. Don't get me wrong, I think that the overall narrative is good, but it could've been better. In my opinion, it lacks two, maybe three additional memories exploring Ativo's character and motivations. Wayla could've been fleshed out more, the same could be said about the relationship between Kalani and her father cement the bond between players and the main cast of characters. It would enhance the experience even more. The last note about the plot refers to a side narrative it tries to sneak in. Lost Ember provides comments about environmentalism and nature's prevalence. Some of those comments are pretty obvious, such as a cutscene where wolves are kept in cages in order to be later forced to fight against warriors in arena. During Yanrana civilization's prime, rivers were covered in toxic algae, but now, years after their demise, it's clear again. Great sprawling Yanrana cities lay in ruins overgrown by trees and moss. This is a world ruled by nature and its most pure inhabitants, animals. The animal kingdom is used as a means for our travel through the game, but it silently shows its purity and beauty.
Munai Studio tells the story of Lost Ember not only through use of memories and flashbacks, but also through its impressive presentation. There is so much care placed on picturesque set pieces combined with impressive, lovely music. It creates this majestic, near-perfect harmony of audiovisual presentation in a game focused mostly on its story. This is an absolute highlight of the game. Developers really like to operate around those big open areas offering picturesque views, enhanced by the vivid colors of this world's fauna and flora. That's where the game looks the best. Because when you closely focus on textures and models, you can clearly see their simplicity and lack of details. The soundtrack for this game is another work of art. I totally love it. It offers some calm, soothing pieces. Music can complement every scene perfectly. It enhances events happening on screen, whether it's a dramatic retelling of a memory or an introduction to a new area. Ooh. Now this looks good. Moon Eye Studios uses its lovely OST to magnify even those little breaks from mundane exploration in wolf's form. It can be playful stream sliding as a fish. <clears throat> it can be free roam exploration as a hummingbird, opening skies before the player for the first time. This is what I really appreciate in Lost Ember using visuals and music to create those impressive, memorable scenes. This world is big. While soundtrack is absolutely amazing, the sound work is just fine. Voice actors did a solid job portraying their respective characters. There's this weird problem during some cutscenes when the camera offers a wide shot of a location, therefore moving away from the spirit that might be talking at the time. It results in its voice being muffled. It seems like proximity voice filter is not being turned off during those cutscenes, so when the camera moves away from talking characters, they become quieter. It's such an obvious oversight. Is that you with your people? They destroyed it. Talking about problems, in my 11 hours spent in game, I had encountered few issues with it. First of all, the game crashed on me one time. It's not a bad score. Controls are decent. I have played the game on mouse and keyboard and it was a fine experience. Default mouse rotation might be a little bit too slow for my taste, but that's all. Players who own a VR headset might be thrilled to know that Lost Ember has built-in VR support. The greatest issue I had with the game was in chapter 2. I have played through a level which was not loaded properly. A big chunk of terrain textures were missing. I kept falling from the map trying to figure out where to go. Then when I reloaded the checkpoint it finally loaded properly. So problem was solved yet a distaste remained as it spoiled my reception of this chapter. What now? Come on look how much of the texture is missing. And the whole... Hmm. How am I supposed to trust this game? I can't see anything. Mm. I guess maybe reloading it will save it. Because right now it's unplayable. When is it? Okay. Did it load correctly now? Come on, look, 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 how much different it is now. Hmm? Talking about visual issues, there is one more. Walls do not have a proper camera collision detection. Therefore, many times players might see parts of the level through walls. I know that this issue is prevalent through gaming, but I find it bothersome. 
Moon Eye Studios game focuses heavily on its story and presentation. This title has one standout gameplay feature, the possession mechanic. As a soul wandering wolf, you can possess other animals. Thanks to it, players can squish into small holes, dig under obstacles, swim across rivers depths and even fly. Playing as other animals is used mostly as a means of bypassing obstacles, traversing greater lengths or finding hidden collectibles. Different species offer some flavor animations, but in the grand scope of things, they are designed as a means of overcoming a specific challenge. Fish allow you to swim and explore various bodies of water. Ducks let you cross gaps in terrain, but they can't get decent altitude. That's where hummingbirds or other birds come in handy. Goats are used for parkour, and wombats let you explore small caves, and they are just adorable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> there are more creatures in the game. I don't want to spoil everything. Unfortunately, the gameplay itself is lacking. Player will end up running from memory to memory, occasionally exploring zones a little bit, maybe collecting some mushrooms. I feel like the possession mechanic is underutilized. There could be more depth and functionality assigned to each animal type. It leaves player with little choice but to just follow the story or explore the surroundings, which quickly gets boring and tedious. Also, the level design and its openness can work against the player. There are moments where it can be really hard to say where to go. Let's take this situation as an example. After accessing the memory, I was left wondering where to go. The game kinda shows you the next location without a clear way to get there. If you want to jump down, you are returned back to the edge of the rock formation. The frustrating thing is that you kinda see the way to go, but you need to approach it the way developers intended. It's an opening there and I thought of destroying it, but... Um, well, not right now it works. Lost Ember encompasses an impressive amount of collectibles in form of mushrooms and relics of Yanrana civilization. While it might give completionists something to do, I believe that it ends up hurting the overall experience as it further uncovers the flaws within level design. More on that in the achievement and collectibles section. This is the part where I'm going to focus on 100 to 200 most recent Steam reviews for the game. I want to see other people's opinions, what they liked about Lost Ember and what they didn't like. At the time of making this review, the game sees at the score of 88% positive reviews out of almost 3400 user reviews. The vast majority of positive opinions focus on the story, graphics and music, praising the visual art design, beautiful soundtrack and emotional story. A lot of reviewers took a liking to the aspect of being able to play as different animals. They liked how cute some of them are. A reoccurring theme shows appreciation to the fact that you can simply play as a wolf, which a lot of people liked. So I guess it's a nice game for the animal lovers. There's one aspect of the game that I haven't focused on, yet it seems like it's an important factor to other people. Lost Ember is a deeply relaxing experience. There are numerous reviews praising this title for being calm, soothing and relaxing. And this is where my personal biases might show up. I usually expect some sort of challenge in games, a problem to overcome. While I can recognize the artistic values of Lost Ember, I actually kinda passed over its tone. And it might be important to some gamers, because after a hard day at work, it's all someone might be looking for. An easy, low stakes experience where you can take your time as you wish. Relax on a meadow, swim in the river, fly through beautiful mountain ranges. So that's definitely a great insight into what other people appreciated in Lost Ember. Negative reviews focus mostly on the collectible hunt, which is a very fair criticism, as I am going to explain it in the next segment. Some people do not like the movement, which can feel a little bit sketchy, but wasn't a big problem for me. 
then there are numerous problems with bugs. I had a fair share of them myself. Yet, an interesting thing to note here is that some people claim that even reloading the checkpoint didn't fix the issue for them. And then there are the usual walking sim accusations. I really dislike this walking simulation term and how it's used to criticize games. Journey, another exceptionally well-crafted artistic experience, is a walking sim. Detroit Become Human can be described as a walking sim. You just go from QTE to QTE. Someone can describe point and click games as walking sims. It's so disingenuous. Yes, in a simplified terms, Lost Ember is a game where you walk from a memory to memory. But it's all in the background, the story, the visuals, the music. That's what counts here. Would it be better if it had a deeper gameplay mechanics? Maybe. There are games like for example Ori and the Blind Forest, games that can have it all. Emotional story, beautiful visuals and really engaging gameplay. For me, that's a perfect mix. But it doesn't have to work for everyone. I would like to have more depth within the possession mechanic, an expanded, more developed and meaningful controls behind every animal. But to call the walking sim? No, I don't agree. I guess if you are an action-focused gamer, then you might not like Lost Ember. This is a slower, calmer experience, but it's not focused on walking. It's focused on the story and everything that surrounds the player. I feel it, I find it to be, uh, you know, a, kind of breathtaking. The, the, the calm meadow, just like that. It looks so relaxing. And the music and the whole landscape. You don't have to use the best graphics, I mean the most realistic graphics, as long as you use your visual art style like they do in here. And listen, I do not berate any opinion showed in here. I just clash my opinions with arguments of other gamers. Let's keep it civilized. Lost Ember hosts a decent number of achievements. Most of them are tied to natural in-game progression and collectibles. And let's focus on collectible hunt. Unfortunately, I think that gathering different relics and mushrooms devalues the overall reception of the game, at least in my opinion. You see, as I said before, the game heavily relies on presentation. In the macro perspective, Lost Ember creates those beautiful, vast landscapes reminiscent of some older Disney animations. But then developers decided to plant tens of mushrooms and relics in each level, forcing completionists to look for them. The visuals are the strongest when you look at the areas from afar, when you treat each open zone as a background to the story. But when players have to check each corner for hidden treasures, they discover awful graphics and subpar level design. Many times I wasn't sure if I even were still with an area designed to be explorable or if I went completely out of bounds. Placement of some mushrooms doesn't help either since they grow at the level borders, further increasing players' uncertainty at where should they look. This is such a weird choice. I have a feeling like I'm not supposed to be able to do that but... Even if you are going to assume that a small percentage of players are going to go out of their way to explore each zone. Why do you even make them do it, if it uncovers glaring holes and weaknesses of your visual art design and level design? Here, this zone is a perfect example, a huge open area, and if I remember correctly there are about 6 or 7 mushrooms hidden here with addition of 3 relics. So what players like me do? They meticulously scour the land, flying to each bush, every corner of the map. It took me about 30 minutes to search this zone. 30 minutes of mundane flying animation of the hummingbird. This is also where simplicity of the gameplay increases the tedium of collectible hunt. After I was done with my search, I was so tired of the location. I could barely look at it. I don't understand why Moon Eye Studios developers insisted on placing so many collectibles in the game, especially since they don't add any value. Mushrooms give no reward, just achievements. At least relics and legendary creatures give you some kind of reward. Relics offer their descriptions, which is at least something, a flavor text. And legendary creatures are basically a special skin for your animals. Actually, those rare creatures are introduced much better in the game. They are usually placed around the main paths, which makes them easier to be found. 
You can possess them, which adds some value, as player can at least play with their new toys. And there are only 6 of them, which makes it manageable. My solution to the collectibles problem would be to delete 2 thirds of them and place those that are left closer to the main path. Then create some kind of a puzzle, challenge or at least an interesting hiding spot for them. Something that could grab attention so the player don't wander aimlessly through the zone. In my opinion it would work much better than the current system. To be honest Moon Eye Studios proved to be able to actually make it right as there is one collectible which opens up a Flappy Bird minigame. But unfortunately in a vast sea of collectibles they do it just once. Still this is what the game needs. So, switching the topic to the achievements. If you are going for a full collectible completion, then you will get almost full achievement completion. The cool thing is that collectible achievements are graded. So if you will get let's say 50% of mushrooms and decide that you are not going to continue, then you still get a couple of achievements from it. There are also some relics referring to other games which award you a special achievements for getting them. Triforce, Pokeball or Portal Cube. A fun addition. Friendly cube, show me. Is that the... Hmm... Valve cube. I'm not gonna lie, I was close to dropping my collectible hunt. It's easy to recognize missing relics because each one has a number assigned. It helps at locating them. Unfortunately mushrooms do not have that. So you can just look at the overall chapter scoreboard and see how many you've missed and then replay the whole level and check every mushroom location. It's daunting, but one thing kept me going. The achievement for getting all of the achievements. The you are breathtaking one. You're breathtaking! Nanny! Lost Ember is an interactive visual story, told with great attention to how it's presented. Players take a role of soul wandering wolf accompanied by a lost spirit. The duo seeks through memories of their past and the remnants of an old civilization. Plot touches on numerous issues ranging from class inequality to subtle commentary about nature and environment. This is an emotional story. Developers focus on grand picturesque open areas, colorful meadows, lost cities, grand canyons filled with waterfalls. Game's artistic imagery is enhanced through fantastic soundtrack. Audiovisual design tells a story of its own and is an integral part of storytelling. Even though I have a deep appreciation towards the game's story and visual design, I found it lacking in terms of gameplay. Lost Ember's possess mechanic feels lackluster. The collectible hunt works against the overall feel of the game as it exposes graphical simplicity and subpar level design. This is definitely a positive review. But I cannot recommend the game to everyone. Simplicity of gameplay paired with flawed collectible hunt cast a shadow on Lost Ember. Yet, as an emotional, visually impressive story, it achieved artistic heights far above the grasp of many other projects. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you liked it then press thumbs up, maybe leave a comment and subscribe for more similar videos. If you didn't like it then please let me know what you disliked. My question to you after this video is, what games in your opinion have elements actively working against each other design wise? So that's all for me, bye.